don't forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack making backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the Vato speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Gold BBS is on a beamer. When Fat Cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the prop and not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm Baby Man. Just caught a touchdown. Now, what would y'all do if y'all hit a lick for a hundred long at the ATM and got away with it scot-free? And when I mean scot-free, not even the FBI know you did it. One person in jail linked to blowing up an ATM with a pipe bomb. DeKalb County Police say this was in the drive through at a Bank of America branch along Lawrenceville Highway. And it is reported that someone used a pipe bomb to blow up the ATM, then take off with what was described as a large amount of cash. This brought several agencies to investigate, including ATF and the FBI. A few hours later, a suspect was identified and arrested roughly three miles from the bank branch. Well, that's not him. So good luck with that one, 12. But back to the question at hand. Y'all just stung him for a hundred. What y'all gonna do? Shit. The obvious answer. Let's run that play back again. You now know the name of the man police say used a pipe bomb to try to steal money from an ATM. DeKalb County jail records show authorities booked Abdurrahim Jalal on theft, arson, and explosives charges Saturday after police shut down a busy street in Decatur to search his home. Fox News Claire Sims was the only reporter in the courtroom as Jalal made his first court appearance this afternoon. Prosecutors say after Jalal blew up that ATM in March, he started casing other banks, and they believe he was about to do it again. DeKalb County Assistant District Attorney Lance Cross asks a judge not to grant bond for Abdurrahim Jalal. Jalal appeared in DeKalb County Magistrate Court Monday afternoon, charged with theft by taking, arson, and possession of explosives with intent to destroy a building. DeKalb County Police say Jalal used a pipe bomb to blow up this Bank of America ATM off Lawrenceville Highway March 29th and steal a large amount of cash. DeKalb police, along with the ATF, FBI, and other agencies, executed a search warrant at Jalal's home off Scott Boulevard in Decatur Saturday morning. Jalal's public defender, Arnise Cabrera Alvarez, told the judge the 52-year-old has three children and is an Army veteran. Uh, so we are requesting a reasonable bond in this case. Um, there's no reason to think that he's a risk to reoffend based on his criminal history, Judge. But the prosecution argued Jalal had a stolen license plate on his truck, bought brand new tires almost immediately after the theft, and traveled to a casino out of state where he used the bank money to buy chips. Authorities also reportedly found these explosive devices at his home, located on the same block as an elementary school. And most importantly, he was surveilled going to stores and buying new bomb making material, new tubes and a new pry bar to do this all over again. The judge granted Jalal $50,000 bond, though prosecutors say he will likely end up in federal custody. In DeKalb County, Claire Sims, Fox 5 News. Now, if that ain't bad enough, just wait, it gets worse. A stunning new twist in an already wild story. A Decatur man accused of blowing up an ATM is now being linked to the discovery of human remains. Atlanta News First Chelsea Vinefour is live at the DeKalb County Jail where that man is now in custody. Chelsea. Hey guys, Abdul, excuse me, Abdul Rahim Jalal has been in jail here since April in DeKalb County. But this week, police said he's tied to another possible case in Metro Atlanta. Just when you think things are over, as far as the situation is concerned, something else happens. Ken Schultz lives on Scott Boulevard in Decatur. Since April, he's witnessed two police raids at the home next door. Then I look out further and I see that there's 
The whole entire property over here is again swarmed by police vehicles. Uh, and they've got the whole thing blocked off. The first search happened April 29th, the same day that DeKalb police arrested Schultz's neighbor, Abdurrahim Jalal, for allegedly blowing up an ATM at a DeKalb County bank in March. The bomb squad was banging on my door about 30 minutes later saying, you know, do you have somewhere you can go? Court documents reveal that investigators found eight more pipe bombs inside Jalal's home, just one driveway over from Schultz. You just wonder, you know. About two months later, Duluth police, a different agency, showed up to the home. When our partners at Decaturish asked them why they were at Jalal's house, they replied with a police report about human remains found at a property on Abbott's Bridge Road. On Wednesday, Duluth police said those remains belonged to this woman who they need help identifying. Though investigators haven't elaborated on Jalal's involvement in that case, Schultz calls the whole situation shocking. We've had conversations on a neighborly basis. Um, and you would not think that something like that was going on with someone. Um, but then again, you never really know what's going on behind someone else's door. And police have not said exactly how Jalal is tied to this human remains case. They also have not given us a cause of death for that young woman. All right, y'all. I probably would have chilled after I hit that first one. But that shit was so easy. Fuck that. Let's hit that bitch again. Like, run that shit back, Turbo. But the thing about me is, I'm not going to have a dead body on my premises. Hey, what's the business? Shades Papito. Salute the almighty mob. We A-Town bound with this shit. Y'all go ahead, put on all black, and meet us near North DeKalb Mall right around 3 a.m. Now, today, I'm going to do my absolute best to tell you guys the story of a 53-year-old DeKalb County man who would happen to hit a can't-miss lick only to try it again and miss horribly. Now, that person that I'm talking about is going to be a man by the name of Abdul Rahim Jalal. Now, based on my research, it looks like Mr. Jalal happens to be the owner of a landscape design slash operations company by the name of Proud Lands Landscape, LLC. Mr. Jalal, who fancies himself as a construction consultant and a state licensed residential contractor with the company looking like it specialized in detailed landscapes, outdoor construction, covered patios and decks. But based on the findings that will come out in early May of last year, Behind that said-to-be award-winning landscaping business, Abdul Rahim Jalal would be constructing something way more sinister. Now, according to 95.5 WSB, at approximately 3.11 a.m. on March 29, 2003, Mr. Jalal would be alleged to have blown up an ATM at a Bank of America branch that was located at the North DeKalb Mall in Decatur, Georgia. In a case that would originally involve the DeKalb County Police Department and DeKalb County Fire and Rescue, court documents would allege that after blowing up the ATM, Jalal would proceed to take $88,780, which included $42,320 in $20 bills and $13,160 in $10 bills. Surveillance camera footage was said to show an individual believed to be Jalal trying to take out the camera with what appeared to be a can of bug spray with the complaint reading that he wore a hooded sweatshirt, a cloth face mask, as well as distinctive rectangular eyeglasses. The complaint continues that minutes after trying to disable the camera, the same suspect would reappear driving a black Lincoln sports utility vehicle. Now, for those of y'all that want the rundown to make sure you don't get into no shit like this, they would say that that same suspect would use a pry bar to breach a hole in the ATM and then inserted two blue hoses that appeared to originate and extend from the SUV. Now, whatever the subject happened to do next is unknown due to the grainy surveillance footage, but investigators believe that the tubing would feed in a fuel gas as well as other accelerants into the ATM, after which they would say that the subject would affix what appeared to be a metal pipe 
to the front exterior side of the ATM, with the pipe appearing to be only a few inches long, which would include two end caps and wiring that would also extend to the SUV. Now, y'all be careful if y'all not trying to get into this shit. This shit sound dangerous. Now, right before the explosion at the ATM, more video footage from a nearby gas station appeared to show the same Lincoln SUV driving through its lot at around 2.51 a.m. with one wheel being darker than the others, leading investigators to believe that it was a spare tire. At 3.14 a.m., following the explosion and theft, footage from a nearby medical clinic would also show a vehicle that they said was consistent with the appearance of that SUV. With this being pretty much a bank robbery without a note and a federal crime, the ATF as well as the FBI would be brought in on the case. But even with all of that and the big dogs, they still ain't no shit. And it wouldn't be till almost approximately a month later on April the 25th of 2003 when authorities would observe Abdul Rahim Jalal driving around the greater Atlanta area, making several stops, with three of those stops being near bank branch locations with ATMs, near intersections with easy access to highways and freeways. Agents would go on to note in a later complaint that all of the locations were similar to the original location that had been bombed back in March of 2023. Now, after being spotted driving through the greater Atlanta area, making those suspicious stops on the very next day, April the 26th, 2023, Jalal will return to two of the three locations he had stopped at at around 2.30 a.m. and 3.15 a.m., leading investigators to believe that they say that those were the potential locations for his next come up, but he wouldn't have the chance as he would be arrested three days later on April 29th with authorities charging him with possessing explosives, destructive devices, as well as theft by taking and arson in the second degree. Now at the time of his arrest, 95.5 WSB would end the article by saying he had not been charged at the federal level. But y'all know when shit stink, shit get funky. In just three months after his arrest in late April of 2003, Atlanta's First News would report that the Duluth police would link Abdul Rahim Jalal to unidentified human remains. Man, I could not make this shit up. They would report that during the investigation of the ATM bombing on June the 20th of 2023, Duluth police, as well as another unidentified agency, would show up to search a home that Jalal was residing in and when asked by the media how come they were at a house that had already been searched, the spokesman for the Duluth Police Department would reply that they had a police report about human remains that were found at a property located on Abbott's Bridge Road. Now, I do have to say that at the beginning that I said that Abdul Rahim Jalal had a can't miss lip, but what he didn't know is that even before he went out to case another bank, them people was on his ass, and it would be that same Lincoln SUV that he would use to drive away with that near 100000 that would track them to him. And it wouldn't be that spare tire that they would notice. It would be the body style of that specific Lincoln that just happened to be a navigator. Authorities would say that Though it's a lot of black Lincoln navigators in the greater Atlanta area, there weren't too many driving around that was 20 years old. And it wouldn't be long before authorities would determine that one happened to be registered by a company by the name of Proud Land Landscaping, LLC. And more than 20 days before he would go to case that second bank, authorities would find out that that same Lincoln navigator that they suspected to be involved in the ATM bombing would have tires changed at a nearby garage on April 6. While continuing following the vehicle that day, they would notice it traveling to Murphy, North Carolina, where Jalal would stay for the remainder of that day, as well as April 7th, 8th, and 9th. 
where he would be gambling at a nearby casino and they would assume that he was exchanging money from the ATM lick for poker chips and the efforts to try to clean it up. And the thing about the feds is they're kind of funny. They kind of like linger around and make you think like, are they not coming? And then they come. Six months after the bombing and only two months after finding the human remains, in September of 2003, Abdul Rahim Jalal would be indicted by the federal government. Now, we all know the feds had to come because of that bank money. But after you get found with bombs and human remains and shit like that, they might have been coming anyway. Y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box below. Y'all let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we need to tell, what we missed, what we got wrong, all of that. Y'all tapping with me directly on Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And until the next play, y'all know how we rocking. Shades popular. Salute the almighty mob.